Hey guys, Ryan here, and in this video, I'm going to be covering how to block adverts, malware, and adult content on any device connected to your home network, and that includes mobile phones, smart TVs, tablets, as well as any desktop or laptop computers you might have hanging around. So in order to do this, we're going to make use of two technologies. So the first technology is going to be Piehole, and this allows to block adverts on the network, or more specifically, what it will allow us to do is block them from entering your network in the first place using a method what's known as a DNS sync. And second, we're going to make use of the Cloudflare's DNS service for families, which will automatically block malware and adult content. Although if you want, there is an option just to block the malware if you want to be a bit cheeky. However, before we crack on, there are a couple of requirements we need to do before we can proceed. So to use Pihole, there are a couple of requirements we need to consider. The first one is we need a physical device to run Pihole, and that device does need to be running a Linux distribution. Now personally, I use my Raspberry Pi 4 for this purpose, but if you want to keep it simple, you could install a bunch of an old desktop or laptop they have hanging around, and then connect it up to your network. Alternatively, you can technically run Pihole in a virtual machine, use Windows Subsystem for Linux, or even host it using Docker. But these options are kind of beyond the scope of this video. And the second requirement is that the device itself with Pihole that's installed does need to be using a static IP address. So in other words, it needs an IP address that's not going to change. And this is important mainly because we're going to be using this device later on down the line as a DNS and a DHCP server on your network, which basically in simple terms means that it's going to be used to tell devices on the network where things are located on the internet and also allowing them to individually talk to each other. Now, in most cases, this can be set graphically using tools that are included in the Linux desktop environment. For example, Ubuntu has the network sense application. Or alternatively, you want to go the route of config files, then you can do that if you've maybe got a headless Raspberry Pi setup. I'd also make sure that the IP address you choose is outside of your usual DHCP range, just to avoid any IP clashes. But in either case, once these two requirements are satisfied, then we can move on to installing Pihole. So for this video, I'm going to be demonstrating the installation process of Pihole using my Raspberry Pi, but you'll find that the process will be identical regardless of what supported Linux distribution you decide to go with. The first thing we need to do is open up a terminal window and you want to run the following command. And that command is curl-ssl http colon slash slash install pihole.net and then pipe and then the word bash. And this single command will begin the installation process. Okay, so the process is starting now. So really it's just a case of confirming through the prompts and make sure that you press continue until you see the message about the static IP address needed. Okay, so we're at this stage now where it's asking about it. So let's press continue. And next we need to choose our interface. And you have got two options. You have the wired or the wireless. In my case, I'm gonna go for the wired one, which is the end zero. Uh, I've already set static IP address on my Raspberry ahead of time. But at this point, here's where you could actually have an option to set it. So I've gone from 192.168.1.2. So yes, I'm going to continue and set that option. Okay, so now we're going to choose our upstream DNS provider. And this is where the Cloudflare family DNS servers come in. So what we want to do is go down to the bottom, choose the option for custom, and then type in the following, which is triple one, F3, then put a comma, do a space, and then put 1003, so 1.003, and then press OK. It'll ask you to confirm that's correct. So yes, that's right, and then press yes. Now next thing it's gonna ask you is about block list. This is more to do the ad block, block inside of things. So again, we're gonna press yes for this. If we want to install the admin web interface, I would recommend you do this, as well as the web server as well. You can also enable query login if you want. Again, it's optional for you. I'm just gonna leave it as yes for now. And then finally, how much information you want to be shown. I tend to go with show everything. So let's press continue on that. And now the process of installation is going to begin, which shouldn't take too long at all. So once this process is finished, you'll be greeted with a installation complete page, including a summary of your configuration and a password, which you want to make sure you note this down because we're gonna need that in a second. But really at this point, we can close down this window. So let's go to OK, and then we'll press X to close it down. OK, so the next thing we need to do is set up your network router to use Pihole as the DNS server, as well as disable the inbuilt DHCP server. 
Now, this, this part of the video is obviously going to differ depending on who your manufacturer your router is, as you'll find that each interface will be different. But in most cases, you'll find that there should be a dedicated DNS section and a DHP section. Now, of course, if you're unsure, easiest way to do it is just check the documentation for your router or even just watch a couple of videos on YouTube. But in either case, you want to change the DNS server field so that it's now using the IP address of the device running Pi-hole, which in my case is 192.168.1.2. And in the section that has the DHP server, just make sure that that's set to be toggled off. And once we've done all this, there's just one more step to go. So the reason we disabled the DHP server on the router was so that we could use the Pi-Hole's DHP server instead, as this will allow both wired and wireless clients to benefit from the setup. Now to access the web interface of the Pi-Hole, you want to type the IP address of the device running the software. So in this case, 192.168.1.2, then forward slash admin. From here, it's mainly a matter of just typing in the password from earlier. So once you've signed in, you want to click on the settings tab on the left hand side, and then click on the option at the top where it says DHCP. Now the final thing we need to do is make sure that we tick this button here where it says DHCP server enabled, and then specify a sensible range. In my case, I'm just going from 201 to 251, as I have less than 50 devices in the house. Now, of course, there are other tons of things you can do with Pi-hole, but for the moment, now you'll find that any devices that now connect to your network will automatically block adverts, malware, and adult content. And with that, you're all done. So, in conclusion, this is a simple but effective way of securing your network without shelling out for expensive content filtering or even some bloated software packages. But in either case, thanks for watching this video today. If you found it helpful, then please don't forget to leave a like, share the video, and subscribe to this channel for more content like this in the future. See you later. Bye now.